Shalom, shalom everybody. Hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to another Pulse of Israel episode in the middle of our war. So I'm in between shifts and now in the beautiful, beautiful, look at this sunset behind me, Judean hills, ancestral, historical, biblical. This is our homeland, folks. This is what we're fighting for. This is what we're living for. The Jewish people were alive and well to bring life, to bring goodness, to bring holiness to the world from this beautiful, holy place of ours, our holy land. That's what it's all about. Us Jews reclaiming our ancestral Jewish identity in our ancestral homeland. This is where we thrive. This is where we live as the Jews we are supposed to live connected by our feet with our ancestors, connected with our ancestral traditions, because only here in our homeland are we allowed and supposed to do all of them, all of them. There are even big rabbis who say that the commandments, if we follow outside of the land of Israel, it's not because we're supposed to, it's only in order to practice to then be ready to do them when we are back living here in our holy ancestral homeland, Israel. So this fight that's going on today, it's about us living here, not about Gaza. And the saddest thing, it's, it's that the Arab Muslims themselves are telling us that it's not about Gaza. Did you know that the name of this war by Hamas it's not the Gaza war. It's not the kill the Jew outside Gaza war. It's the Al-Aqsa flood war. They're fighting for Jerusalem. They're fighting for the Temple Mount. The Arab Muslims know this is a religious war. They are fighting us because of their religion. Because according to Islam, Jews cannot have sovereignty in our homeland. Jews cannot live here alive as Jews in power. We must be killed or be subdued. Because Islam is not about peace. That's the biggest lie in the Muslim world that non-Muslims buy, and especially in today's progressive circles. Islam is not peace. <coughs> Islam is about subjugation to God. Islam is about subjugating everyone to be Muslim. And if you don't convert to be Muslim, then you are persecuted as a dhimmi, as a second-class citizen under Islam. That's Islam, folks. That's what this war is about. That's why they call the war the Al-Aqsa Flood, in order to get rid of us Jews from our holy land and from Jerusalem. So why do the Muslims know that it's a religious war, but the Jews don't? You know the quickest way to end this war? It's not even about what we do in Gaza. It's about kicking off all Muslim terror authorities off of the Temple Mount. And opening up the Temple Mount for freedom of worship to all, all the time. That is how we win this war. That is how we show the Muslim world, we know you're killing us over Jerusalem. We know you're killing us because of our sovereignty and our ancestral homeland. So we're not going to fight you just in Gaza. We're going to go to the heart of the matter. We're going to take back and act as the true sovereign on the Temple Mount. That is how we win this war. But we don't have the leaders who are willing to go there, who are willing to acknowledge that. Most of the leaders today, even most of the rabbis, won't even talk about that. They won't even go there. They're so afraid. Again, all of our leaders, religious, secular, political, organizational, they're all afraid, afraid of the world. But the Jewish people are waking up. The Jewish people are realizing the war against us it's not about Gaza. It's not about where we live. It's that we live here as the sovereign. 
the Jewish people are waking up. And as the Jewish people wake up, and again, I keep on telling you this, everything going on in the world and everything going on in Israel, it's a wake-up process. It's a wake-up process for the people to come up and replace the failed leaders of today who are disconnected from what's actually going on. Or if they do know, they push it away and don't deal with it and ignore it. It's up to us. Our future is up to us. God is looking for us to own our present, to own our future. It's getting rid of the upper echelon of the IDF and the intelligence services and in the government. And not just in Israel, but all over the world. You have the same problems in America and in Europe and in Canada and Australia. Leaders disconnected from reality, the processes we're going through and the painful processes we are going through. It's about waking up the population, waking up the masses who are internalizing what is truly important in our lives to then push forward for the true leadership necessary who will look after our true needs and our true lives to provide the safety and security and proper value system around us so that we thrive in our lives. That's what's going on. And here in Israel, I don't know if you heard, I'm going to be doing a video soon, but uh, there's a teacher in Israel who publicly came out supporting the terrorists, publicly supporting Hamas, putting down Israel, and rightly so, he was fired by, by the Israeli school where he taught, major school. I don't know whether Tel Aviv area, somewhere there. He was fired, right? He's supporting the enemy. It's traitorous. In the, in the time of war. He was fired. Guess what? The justice system, the courts, forced the education system to give him back his job. So you see, within us, we have a cancer. <laughs> within ourselves, a virus, let's call it a virus, whatever. Of, of our own Israelis who happen to be born Jews and yet they, they assist our enemies and the courts are part of it. it we're, we're only in the problem we are in because the Supreme Court and the courts have been so lenient against our enemies and have stopped the Israeli army, stopped the government from properly being able to fight our enemies. Listen, it's not Avi Abelo saying this. Yitzhak Rabin, former prime minister, who was the one behind the disastrous Oslo peace process that really brought destruction and death and terror, he said, why did he do the Oslo peace process? Because the courts stopped him from being able to defeat Hamas. So he thought, oh, I'll bring in Yasser Arafat and the PLO and I'll whitewash that terror group. They're going to want power. They will take care of the Hamas terrorists. And his quote was, bli bagatsu, bli betselem, that they'll be able to fight Hamas without the Supreme Court and without the left-wing anti-Israel organizations like Betselem that stopped the Israeli government together with the Supreme Court from being able to protect Israelis. That's why we're in this mess. We have a screwed up, immoral justice system that looks after the rights of our enemies and for their right to live and not be punished harsh enough more than the right of Israeli Jews, innocent Israeli citizens to live without the fear of being killed by terrorists. So it's this immoral justice system and immoral teachers. This teacher was reinstated by, to his job because of the court. And then when the teacher showed up at school, guess what? The students were protesting because the students have come alive. It's the younger generation of Israelis who recognize the importance of standing up for our morality and justice and spewing out the, those people who are a virus in our midst. So who knows how long this teacher will stay in the school. Again, he can because the courts forced the education system to put him back, but the students don't want him there. And the students are calling him out. But the most important part, regardless of how long he stays in that school, and this is the point I'm, I'm reiterating again, 
It's the wake up process of the Jewish people. And again, comparative process to peoples all over the world. Here, the youth, they're waking up. They, they understand our enemies want to kill all of us. They understand our Jewish identity and the unity of the Jewish people is what brings us together and that's what's going to help us beat our enemies. Something that too many adults who have been so brainwashed by the progressive anti-Jewish uh, ideology, values, etc. even here in Israel, that they're already disconnected and help our enemies, whether actively or passively. Right? I've posted about this before. I'll do more in-depth Pulse of Israel videos, but the whole Bring Them Home Now movement is a destructive movement that helps Hamas and that is bringing destruction and making it even harder for us to free our captives from Hamas. So again, you have plenty of good-hearted people that think that they're helping. They're, bring them home now, bring them home now, and posting all these things about bring, and going to the protests. But the people behind the Bring Them Home Now protests, some of the major money people, organizers, managers, not the families themselves, they are being used as pawns. But the main power brokers behind the Bring Them Home Now movement, they're destructive. They're helping Hamas, they're helping the enemy. They're demoralizing Israel and the Jewish people. That's the reality. So, but it's, but our youth, our youth, they're waking up. Our youth are healthy, waking up to their being proud Jews and standing up and understanding we're standing here fighting for our lives and for the beauty of the Jewish people and our ancestral homelands, knowing that we're a paradise for any Arab Muslim that wants to live peacefully with us. That's the truth. All right, I'm out of here. Got to get to my next shift. Signing off for another Pulse of Israel episode here in our beautiful, ancestral, eternal, biblical homeland Israel in the Judean hills. If you are not yet a subscriber to my Pulse of Israel videos, go to pulseofisrael.com and click to subscribe. And if you enjoy and support the messages we put out there, go click on the donate button every once in a while on pulseofisrael.com. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Signing off, sending love and the beauty and the spirit of the beautiful Jewish people here in our ancestral homeland. Shalom, everyone. Thanks for watching.